Hi there everyone, I uh, thought I should make a video tutorial for anyone interested in trying out the current public version of the facial animation tool I've been posting to GitHub this month. Uh, so here's where we're going to end up. I thought it was best to focus on a robust implementation of the mouth tracking, even if, and this is the bad news, it means that the eyes and the eyebrows are not in this current build, just the mouth. Uh, those will follow in the coming month, fingers crossed, but sorry if that sounds frustrating, I totally get it. Um, but while eyebrows and eyes are working for me, it's proving a challenge to get the algorithms and the UI all simple enough and, and robust enough for someone who isn't me to actually use. I'm still working on it. I'm pretty confident that we'll get there in the coming month, but just not in this version with .6. Um, but in the coming months, fingers crossed, it's in the pipeline, it is working, but it's just not quite ready for this current version. Uh, this is going to be quite a long video, I'm afraid. If you're someone who prefers text, then the documentation is on the GitHub repository, so head along there. Uh, do consider subscribing and liking, though, before you go. Okay, anyway, if you're still here, Here's how we get started. Uh, there are two stages to how I approach facial tracking along with the other mid-level tools I've come across. Landmark tracking is the first where you have a two-dimensional or in some cases three-dimensional set of points representing the key points on the face. Uh, the second is how you actually analyze those two-dimensional set of points to drive an animation. So first of all, head to the GitHub repository and download the executable for Windows, if you're using Windows 10, I do recommend it. If you aren't on Windows, then I'm afraid you'll have to run everything yourself through Python. It's still very easy, you just need to install Python 3 and these libraries which are listed here, and it should work exactly as it is working for me. I am working on making an application for Mac, but it seems a bit trickier than Windows, and I, and I need to prioritize my energies right now. I think, for example, on the eyes and the eyebrows. So, I'm afraid Mac will follow in the uh, not too distant future. So if we download the executable, or if you download the Python script, it will be basically the same thing. But in the case of running the executable, you download it uh, and you click run on the executable like you would any other ex executable. You should be greeted by this window asking to open a video. You also will probably have the console window appear here. I'm hoping to actually replace this with something which is integrated into the UI in the not too distant future, so you might not see this. But if you are seeing this, I would recommend keeping hold of it because, well, if you close it, it will close the program anyway. But also, you'll have messages coming up here which will be useful for what's coming up. The formats currently tested and supported are MP4, AVI, and MOV files, although I can't guarantee it's working for all the various codecs that can fall into those extensions. But I'm guessing most MP4s, for example, will definitely work. I suggest a resolution no higher than 1080p, and ideally you want almost half that, really, because if the face is centered in the frame, 1080p is actually quite excessive for what we're talking about doing here. And it's actually gonna eat into the playback performance at this stage of development anyway. I also suggest cropping the video beforehand to an aspect ratio that's as square as possible, just to make the most of your screen real estate. So once you've selected the video, you'll see two options are now available, new model and load model. For this tutorial, I'll select new model because we haven't made one yet, and I'll give it a name. Once I've done that, the video opens. What I'll do then is I'll wait for a neutral face pose and I'll hit space to pause the video. And so the model that we've just created has no idea what your face looks like, so it will have a generic face that has loaded up. It's important that the first one you log in a model is a neutral pose for reasons we'll see later. And the good news is that this is the most tedious, boring bit, and it's, it's not too lengthy, so it's all downhill from here, pretty much. Uh, to help out with that, though, we have these white dots which influence the dots around them, as you can see. And if I want to move a whole section, like the nose, for example, or the eyes, or the jaw, I'll hit that with right-click and I'll be able to drag that around. When I'm done, I hit F to log that new set of landmarks. And because this is a brand new model, as we just saw, we will just grind away very quickly, hopefully, on that, and it will generate a new model. Now, this model is only based off that first thing we set, so that's what it will be doing for every single frame, but we'll just very quickly add new ones. Okay, now I'll go to the next pose, and you'll see in this video I'm pulling various extreme poses 
That's just to make this process a lot more efficient. If we have all the different extremes, then the model's gonna learn a lot quicker. But what I'll do first, actually, is rather than do those extreme poses, I'll just skip through to where I return to neutral, just to really make sure the model has a clear idea of what neutral is. It will just save me some time to get those, tr those landmarks in now, before it's starting to analyze things more complexly. So I'll hit F and then go to another neutral pose, make a, a small correction here and there maybe, and hit F again. And you'll see that right now it's not training the model because I'm just hitting F. And then once I return to the extreme pose of the jaw open in, the, in this case, I'll set the landmarks, making sure that the green lip points are on the top lip and the blue lip points are on the bottom lip. And then I'll hit F and then now that I've added in a lot of different poses, or landmark sets, I should say, I will hit T to train the model, and then it will pause for a little while, not too long again. And now you'll see that it will spring to life, it will be more responsive, and it will start to make guesses at what pose is being produced. So for now, this model only has a few images to go off, but it will be learning quicker and quicker and quicker from now on. So I'll go to the next extreme pose, which in this case is a closed smile on both sides of my face. Now, I'll again, I'll continue to set the points. An important thing though now, I want to point out is that you have these two options, which is the N key for neutral and the world key, which is W. Now neutral returns the lips to that first neutral pose we first entered, which is why it was important that it be a neutral pose. And this is just very useful for saving time when you want to have a neutral pose on the lips or just to return from some sort of strange, whatever extreme pose that you're in. W is the weld key, which is again quite useful for when you want to just zip the central lip points together, which can just be very useful for common corrections where it's not quite closed. And that's actually a very useful thing, thing for the animation to know about when lips are sealed because that's obviously a good indication that your mouth is closed. Okay, and so there's not much to say about this. I'll, you know, I'll just speed this up. Uh, this takes about sort of five or 10 minutes. It's definitely not the most fun 10 minutes you'll ever have in your life, but it doesn't take too long. The nice thing is that this means your model is useful uh, usable, I should say, for commercial purposes, because you made it. A lot of the pre-trained models out there have strings attached. I'm sure you could probably get away with using them, of course, but it's still nice to know. But also, much more importantly for me, for example, is that it can accommodate much more extreme camera angles and facial expressions. So if you're using a head-mounted camera where the camera is right up against your chin, basically, most pre-trained models simply don't have the data set for that. And also the lip uh, poses that will often be produced in more extreme facial poses, again, aren't necessarily in those pre-trained models. Although I'm sure in the coming years, a lot of them will, uh, make no mistake. But for now, I think this is pretty good. Uh, I actually am hoping to make some more upcoming videos on how to make a head-mounted camera for very little money with the Raspberry Pi stuff, and uh, I think I'm also going to be trying to open source a lot of the 3D printed experiments that I've been doing with that. I think we can make something quite interesting. Now that we have those extreme landmarks trained in, I'll close the program and reopen, this time selecting the video that I'm actually going to drive the animation from. I'll load the model now. Instead of making a new one, I'll load it. And you can see that the model we created before is placed in the projects folder next to the executable or where, where the Python scripts are if you're using Python. The file will be called whatever you name the project with source XML appended onto it. So in this case it is test underscore source XML. If I select that then the video opens as before and you can see that the model is now being used with this video. And it's a bit sloppy again to begin with, but you'll see that it only takes a few frames here and there and it will very quickly get up to speed. And again the nice thing is of course that Again, the model is being trained, it will be getting more and more robust. So any video similar to this in future, it will be able to generate landmarks very easily. So I'm just doing the same thing as I did before, logging with F, training with T, using that neutral um, hotkey and the, and the welding hotkey, using right click to drag various sections. 
And again, it's not the fun, most fun thing in the world, but it, it doesn't take too long. And it does mean you, you end up with a very nice, clean, solid track on the mouth points. So a quick terminology thing. Now what we're doing here is trading the landmark sets with different poses of a face. But for the actual process of extracting animation from this, we can quickly tell the program what key poses are which, which are then poses themselves. I realize this might be a bit confusing because there's obviously a bit of overlap in the wording there, but hopefully it should be pretty simple. So I think the best way to demonstrate this is to close the program and reopen the extreme poses file. We pause on a pose and go to this drop down here and, and tell the program now what pose this represents. So neutral in this case, and then jaw open, closed smile here, funnel for lip funnel, pucker for a lip pucker. And so these are the key poses that drive the animation. And that's why I'm discussing this in two halves, because there are key poses of the landmarks to train the model, and then there are key poses to extract animation. Some will overlap, but not all of them will. Some you'll just want to use for training the landmark tracking and for correcting small things, and some you want to just use for extracting animation. Okay, so now that the program knows what to look for in terms of extracting animation, we're very much on the home stretch. We have to close and then reopen the program with that video we want to animate from. This is definitely something I want to streamline. There's a lot of opening and closing, which shouldn't really be there, but for now, we just have to, we just have to go with it. We load in the model, and if everything has gone smoothly, the key poses that we just added in for the animation will be detected and automatically brought in. There's no indication of this, sadly, at this point. You'll just have to take my word for it. But you can see, if you go to the projects folder, again, you'll have a file which is called uh, the name of the model underscore key poses, and that will be in that, in that folder. If there is a matching model for those key poses, those key poses will be brought in automatically, basically. So going back to what I said at the start of this video about two halves, both halves are now covered. We have the landmark tracking and we have the ways to drive the animation from those landmarks with those key poses. With all that done, we can now begin streaming this into Unreal Engine or exporting it to Blender. We have in the menu here, we have these two options. First, we can export the morph targets out to a text file where the programmer will take what we just added in, grind away and then spit out you know, 52% of expression one, 32% of expression two, 16% of three, and so on. Alternatively, we can stream those percentages over OSC into something like the Unreal Engine or Blender, if you have OSC installed in Blender. Uh, I won't be covering that in this tutorial, but I'm gonna use Unreal for this example. And I'm actually gonna start with that because it will help me visualize what's going on. For those of you who don't know what OSC is, it's just a way to stream things like numbers between programs over a network. And here the network, as it were, is just limited to the same machine where Unreal Engine is listening for something. I'm using uh, um, the same 3D model as in the previous video, um, which is actually an old commercial model I purchased way back when, because it's a very good tool for me to assess the quality of the breakdown because it actually is matched to my face. I can't release this project, but I am gonna release a separate project using a 3D model from the Blender Foundation, which I've adapted with shape keys and then brought into Unreal so you can test the whole workflow. I'm also working on releasing uh, more photorealistic models which are not commercial so that you guys can use them. But again, I just wanna prioritize where my energy is going. I hope you guys can understand. The annoying thing about Unreal Engine is though that whilst it's very good for visualization, it can't actually record shape keys at this point in time as far as I know, which is quite surprising to me. It's very good for recording things normally. But that's why we have the second option, which is to export to text. So once I press this export to text, it will close the window and then just in the background, go through all the frames of the video and, and then write that to a text file. Once that's done, you can see that again, it's gone into that projects folder with the name of the video file in this case, with morphs appended to it. And what the morphs are, as we can see in this Unreal window, is all the different possible sort of muscle movements basically of the face with a corresponding number. So we actually sort of, I think we have 51 here. And what that means is we'll have a morph file with 51 different values, basically. You don't actually need to have all 50, but as long as you have a shape key or morph target with the corresponding name, 
then it will either stream them to Unreal in the example project I used, or it will write to them in the example Blender file, which I'm also releasing, with, uh, which has a script here just to quickly go through that file. I also assume that other programs have a way of importing data like this, um, but also Blender and Unreal are free to download, so uh, for the time being, that's what we're gonna go with, I think. If you open the Blender file, you'll see the script in it, uh, to import the text file, and you just sort of change the file path here, then um, it will just write to the character, which is again produced by the Blender Foundation. And it's literally just the same process as in Unreal, but just not in real time, and it's writing those keyframes. And we can sort of see here the different uh, shape key uh, values. We can sort of smooth them down, and then we have our animation. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I think it's been a very long video and uh, this is all subject to change as well going ahead, but things will basically stay the same, so this should be useful for the foreseeable future, hopefully. As I said, I also have documentation in the GitHub where you can read the text version of this if you're not um, interested in the video, although you're at the end now, so thanks very much. So, uh, thanks. Uh, I'm going to be taking a break for the next few days because I found this very intense actually. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not really a programmer um, and so getting this to a state where you guys could use it was uh, a bit of a challenge but I think in the next few weeks uh, the eyebrows and the eyes will be there but uh, I just need to just put my feet up for a while and chill out. If you want to help me out in the meantime uh, do subscribe if you found this useful and uh, those videos will be coming up so that would help you find those videos. Um, and indeed, smash that like button, as they say, or indeed, or just click it, you know. So yeah, I'll leave it there. I hope everyone has a nice week, and uh, I'll see you shortly, hopefully.